1989 was a great year for television. We got long-running sitcoms like Family Matters, Seinfeld, and The Simpsons, a little bit of drama from Baywatch, some late-night talk with the Arsenio Hall Show, and a slice of reality from Cops. It was also the year that one of the greatest American television programming blocks debuted. ABC's TGIF, coming from the initials of the popular phrase, Thank God It's Friday, mainly featured situation comedies aimed at a family audience. Its original run featured several popular shows, including the flagship, and the one this video is about, Full House. Full House was about widowed father and sports anchor Danny Tanner, played by Bob Saget, who, after the death of his wife Pam, recruits his brother-in-law, Jesse Katsopoulos, played by John Stamos, a rock musician, and childhood best friend Joey Gladstone, played by Dave Coulier, a stand-up comedian, to help raise his three daughters. Eldest Donna Jo, or DJ, played by Candace Cameron, middle child Stephanie, played by Jody Sweeten, and youngest Michelle, played by fraternal twins Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen in his San Francisco home. The series was created by Jeff Franklin and executive produced by him along with Thomas L. Miller and Robert L. Boyette. It was produced in association with Lorimar Telepictures, Lorimar Television, and then by Warner Brothers Television. Initially, Jeff intended for there to be more stand-up comics in the mix than just Dave Coulier's character. His original concept was for a comedy about three comedians living under one roof, and he was going to call it House of Comics. When it became clear that the network was looking for something more in the line with Family Ties and The Cosby Show, he changed course. At the time of casting, Bob Saget and Dave Coulier were actual struggling comedians. Dave told BuzzFeed in 2014 how he ended up landing the role of Joey Gladstone. I went on a cattle call audition. They were auditioning every comedian from New York to Los Angeles, and it actually turned out, to be honest with you, to be one of the easiest jobs I ever auditioned for. I went in and auditioned for the role of Joey, which the character hadn't been named Joey Gladstone at the time. I can't even remember what the character's name was that I was auditioning for. But I read the part and I said, ah, that was great. Then I was walking out and Tom Miller, one of the Full House executive producers, said, can you read for the role of the father as well? And the light bulb that went off in my head was, well, I didn't get this part. So I came back in five minutes later and read for the role of the father. So I went home and there was a message, back when we had answering machines, and it was from my manager. He said, Dave, you've got this full house pilot. And I just thought, wow, that was so easy. I was only in there like 10 minutes. No callbacks, nothing. That's it. Bob was the producer's first choice to play Danny Tanner, but he wasn't available due to his commitment as an on-air contributor to CBS's The Morning Program. So instead, they cast John Posey. The only episode he appeared in, though, was an unaired pilot which is now included on the DVD release of season one. The tables turned when Bob got fired from his gig. Jeff took the opportunity to bring him on board and let John go. John Stamos had already gotten some shine as a heartthrob, playing the role of Blackie Parrish on General Hospital. In the original pilot script, Danny's brother-in-law was named Adam Cochran, but since John didn't like the name, it was changed to Jesse Cochran. After season one, though, he exerted even more influence and had the last name changed to Katsopoulos to bring his own Greek heritage to the character. Mary-Kate and Ashley Olsen ended up on the show accidentally. Sort of. According to Rolling Stone, the pair's mother sent a photo of her nine-month-old twins to a casting agency that was represented by a friend for the hell of it. To comply with child labor laws, they were cast to alternate in the role of Michelle during tapings. The girls were jointly credited as Mary Kate Ashley Olsen in seasons two through seven because the producers didn't want audiences to know that the Michelle character was played by twins. It wasn't until the eighth and final season that the credit finally evolved to Mary Kate and Ashley Olsen. The Olsen twins won the role over dozens of other babies due to the fact that they were the only ones who didn't cry once during the audition process. In the beginning, John wasn't exactly a fan of the twins. As it turned out, their prior docile temperament was something of a fluke. He told reporters in 2015 that the babies cried a lot in the beginning and confirmed the rumor that they were briefly replaced by another pair of twins who didn't fare much better, allowing for the Olsons to return. One was much more into her job than the other, however. In 1991, the Washington Post reported that Mary Kate filmed most of season one because Ashley was too afraid to come on the set. That kind of explains why what happened later on happened. As the fraternal twins grew older and it became easier to tell them apart, the producers considered letting one go, reportedly aiming to just keep Mary Kate 
as the sole actor playing Michelle. Ironically, it was John who put his foot down and said that he didn't want one to have to be fired. What a difference a few seasons makes. A then five-year-old Jodie Sweetin holds the title of the only Full House actor who didn't have to audition for the show. She'd already made an impression with a guest spot on Valerie, later titled The Hogan Family, which was another Miller Boyette production, so Jeff just offered her the role, sensing it would be a perfect fit. Hello? Hello? Bye-bye! No, 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 please don't hang up, please. Hello? Yeah. Who is this? Pamela? Pamela? Pamela who? Prior to Full House, Candace Cameron guest starred in roles on shows such as St. Elsewhere, Who's the Boss, and the show her brother Kirk Cameron starred on, Growing Pains. She was 11 years old when she first began playing 10-year-old DJ. Although the series was set in San Francisco, it was taped at the Warner Brothers Studios in Los Angeles. The theme song, Everywhere You Look, was performed by Jesse Frederick, who co-wrote it with writing partner Bennett Salve and series creator Jeff Franklin. The inaugural season of Full House was not successful, and the reviews from critics were scathing. They even got a grade of F in People magazine. Reportedly, a major contributor to the failure was it being placed in an 8 p.m. Eastern time slot, since most first-year series start out in protected time slots preceded by successful lead-ins. To make up for that flub, in its second season, the show was placed immediately following the established hit show, Perfect Strangers. Even the chemistry between the three male leads was a bit shaky during season one. So a road trip to Las Vegas was planned during their hiatus to help them all bond. When it came time to go though, Bob, who was the only married guy in the group, opted to stay home, leaving then single John and Dave to go it alone. The time they spent together did wonders. The bond they ended up building was so strong that the writers began pairing Jesse and Joey off regularly, allowing the two to share scenes as frequently as possible. From 1987 to 1991, which spanned the show's first four seasons, the series aired on Friday nights and later became the lead program of the TGIF programming block. It was briefly moved to Tuesdays during the 87-88 season and then aired twice a week for a few months in order to help the series build an audience. The show remained on Fridays permanently though for the next three seasons. It was then moved back to Tuesdays full time for season five and remained there until its end. It's no secret that Bob's comic propensities are quite dirty. And because of that, he often got in trouble on set even when cameras weren't rolling thanks to his, John and Dave's antics. Dave told Oprah's Where Are They Now in 2015 that the three of them got into a lot of trouble with the moms of their underage co-stars. As they were engaging in their adult fun, they didn't realize that the television monitors were turned on in the schoolroom and all the dressing rooms and in certain offices on the studio lot, so everyone, including the kids, could see what they were doing. All seven of the original cast members remain with the show through its entire eight-year run. Dave's personal life probably benefited the most out of everyone from his tenure on the show since it led him to his future wife. After a season three dream sequence in which the girls were all grown up, he married actress Jane Modine, who played the adult Michelle in 1990. They welcomed a son that same year and then split in 1992. Throughout the show's run, five additional main characters were also introduced. In season two, Danny's reassigned from his duties as a sports anchor by his television station to become co-host of the morning show, Wake Up San Francisco. This move teams him up with Nebraska native, Rebecca Becky Donaldson, played by Lori Loughlin. Lori was originally set to appear in only six episodes, but since producers liked her chemistry with John so much, they decided to expand her role and made Becky a main character. Jesse and Becky eventually fall in love and get married in season four. In season five, she gives birth to their twin sons, Nicholas, also known as Nikki, and Alexander, also known as Alex. As babies, the children were played by Daniel and Kevin Renteria. And in season six, the roles were taken over by Blake and Dylan Toomey Wilhoyt. DJ's best friend, Kimmy Gibbler, played by Andrea Barber, was a recurring character in seasons one through four. She finally got bumped to series regular status in season five. The last main character added was DJ's boyfriend, Steve Hale, played by Scott Weiner. His first appearance was in season five, before he went on to become a series regular in season six and seven. In a similar fashion to the character of Becky, Steve was only supposed to appear in one episode. 
Jeff wasn't just the show's creator. He served as executive producer and a writer as well. It should also be mentioned that he even directed several episodes. As involved as he was with Full House, he left after the fifth season wrapped to focus on another project, hanging with Mr. Cooper. It would be a decision he would live to regret. Even though the series continued for several seasons without him at the helm, he didn't agree with some of the creative decisions the producers made to the characters after his departure. In 1995, ABC announced that it was canceling the show after eight seasons due to the increasing cost of producing it. By the end, the average cost of one episode was $1.3 million, easily double the average cost of most sitcoms. An attempt was made to bring everything over to the newly formed WB network, but the deal fell apart. Several of the cast members have since come out and said that they were devastated by the decision, since the show was still doing well in the ratings. As Full House was entering the second half of the 90s, though, the culture of television was changing. Instead of having wholesome family shows that everyone made it a point to sit down and watch together, there was a shift in programming. Adults wanted to watch shows like The X-Files or Law & Order. Kids and teens wanted to watch My So-Called Life and Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And with cable television giving established network channels a run for their money, ABC, NBC, and CBS had to do their best to keep up with trends or become insignificant. Now let's get into a few more fun facts about Full House. Long before starring together on the show that would catapult their careers, Bob and Dave had already become acquainted when six months after meeting in 1979, Dave took up Bob's offer to crash on his couch while passing through LA. Lori and John knew each other prior to being on Full House together too. During their late teens, while acting on different soap operas, they met through shared social circles. They even went out on a few dates. Things didn't go any further than that though. The catchphrases that many fans remember naturally came from the actors themselves. Dave actually stole his trademark Cut it out. from a good friend of his who he's known since childhood and is also a comedian. The friend included it in his act and Dave told him flat out that he was going to steal it and use it someday. And to this day, the friend still tells Dave that he owes him money for it. DJ's Oh, my Lanta! <laughs> was a last minute addition to a script. Originally, the character was supposed to say, oh my God, but the Christian actress didn't want to take God's name in vain, so she figured out another way to get the same sentiment across. If you pay very close attention throughout the show's first season, you'll notice that any time the audience can see the mannequin in Joey's room, it's wearing the exact same shirt that Joey's wearing in the scene. Just like DJ and Steve did on the show, Candace took Scott to her real life prom too. Warner Brothers Domestic Television Distribution, who handles the domestic and international syndication rights to the series, began airing reruns of the early seasons during the summer of 1991. Starring in September of that year, the show began off-network syndication and was syndicated on various local stations nationwide until 2003. Warner Home Video released all eight seasons of the series on DVD in North America between 2005 and 2007. A complete series box set, including all episodes, was also released towards the end of 2007. The success of the series also sparked a book franchise, centered on characters Stephanie and Michelle, and geared toward children primarily between the ages of 8 and 14. After sitting on the idea for nearly a decade, because networks weren't buying into the nostalgia at the time, Jeff Franklin was finally able to make his Full House reboot happen in 2016. He'd always intended to make a sitcom that would follow the kids all grown up, but he had trouble convincing the networks that it would be a worthy investment. Then Netflix took interest. Fuller House premiered on the streaming service in 2016 and ran for five seasons, concluding in 2020. Full House is currently streaming on Max, Hulu, and Amazon Prime. <laughs>